Good morning and welcome to Daily Morning Prayer. This is for Friday, July 31st. We are continuing out of uh, Common Prayer, a liturgy for ordinary radicals. And we start before we begin uh, a little bit about Ignatius of Loyola, who lived from 1491 to 1556. Ignatius was born to a noble Spanish family. As a young man, he joined the military, but a war injury ended his military career. While recuperating, Ignatius became bored and asked for novels about knights and battles. But all that could be found in the castle where he stayed were books on the life of Christ and the saints of the church. Legend has it that Ignatius read these stories in a competitive manner, imagining how he could, be, how he could beat the various saints at practicing the spiritual disciplines. He soon found that his thoughts on the saints left him with more peaceful and satisfied feelings than his daydreams about the noble life he had known before his injury. After his illness, Ignatius began practicing his competitive notions of rivaling the saints and wrote about his experiences of Christian disciplines. His scribblings became the spiritual classics, the spiritual exercises of St. Ignatius, used by Christians for centuries in the practice of discernment. He eventually founded the Society of Jesus, an order still known widely for a commitment to foreign missions and religious education. O Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you, as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Our song for this morning is Ubi Caritas, uh, which we will sing first in Latin, which is the Ubi Caritas part, and then in English. And I'll have both of those uh, written out in the video description. Ubi caritas et amor, ubi caritas Deus ibi est. Live in charity and steadfast love. Live in charity, God will dwell with you. Teach us to give and not to count the loss, the cost. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 145, verses 5 through 9. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will tell of your greatness. They will publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and God's compassion is over all the works of the world. Teach us to give and not to count the cost. Our Old Testament reading for this morning comes from 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 17 through 27. Samuel summoned the people to the Lord at Mitzpah and said to them, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I brought up Israel out of Egypt, and I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the hand of all the kingdoms that were oppressing you. But today you have rejected your God, who saves you from all calamities and your distresses, and you have said no, but set a king over us. Now therefore present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your clans. Then Samuel brought all the tribes and the clans of Israel near, and the tribe of Benjamin was taken by Lot. He brought the tribe of Benjamin near by its families, and the family of the Matrites was taken by Lot. Finally, he brought the family of the Matrites near man by man, and Saul, the son of Kish, was taken by Lot. But when they sought him, he could not be found. So they inquired again of the Lord, Did the man come here? And the Lord said, See, he has hidden himself among the baggage. Then they ran and brought him from there. When he took his stand among the people, he was head and shoulders taller than any of them. Samuel said to all the people, Do you see the one whom the Lord has chosen? There is no one like him among all the people. And all the people shouted, Long live the king! 
Samuel told the people the rights and duties of the kingship, and he wrote them in a book and laid it up before the Lord. Then Samuel sent all the people back to their homes. Saul also went to his home at Gibeah, and with him went warriors whose hearts God had touched. But some worthless fellows said, How can this man save us? They despised him and brought him no present, but he held his peace. Now Nahash, king of the Ammonites, had been grievously oppressing the Gadites and the Reubenites. He would gouge out the right eye of each of them and would not grant Israel a deliverer. No one was left of the Israelites across the Jordan whose right eye Nahash, king of the Ammonites, had not gouged out. But there were 7,000 men who had escaped from the Ammonites and had entered Jabesh-Gilead. Our New Testament reading comes out of the book of Acts, chapter 28, verses 17 through 31. And this will finish the book of Acts. Three days later, Paul called together the local leaders of the Jews. When they had assembled, he said to them, Brothers, though I had done nothing against your people or the customs of our ancestors, yet I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. When they had examined me, the Romans wanted to release me because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to the emperor, even though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and speak with you, since it is for the sake and the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. They replied, We have received no letters from Judea about you, and none of the brothers coming here has reported or spoken anything evil about you. But we would like to hear from you what you think, for with regard to this new sect that we know everywhere it is spoken against. After they had set a day to meet with him, they came to him at his lodgings in great numbers. From morning until evening, Paul explained the matter to them, testifying to the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus, from both the law of Moses and from the prophets. Some were convinced by what he had said, while others refused to believe. So they disagreed with each other, and as they were leaving, Paul made one further statement. The Holy Spirit was right in saying to your ancestors through the prophet Isaiah, Go to this people and say, You will indeed listen, but never understand. You will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, so that they might not look with their eyes and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. Let it be known to you then that the salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. They will listen. He lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. Teach us to give and not to count the loss. These are the words of Ignatius of Loyola, founder of the Jesuits. Consider that the blessed life we so long for consists in an intimate and true love of God our Creator and Lord, which binds and obliges us all to a sincere love. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Uh, before we conclude, I want to share, there's a little box here, and it's uh, entitled, Becoming the Answer to Our Prayers, a few ideas. So here's some things that maybe you want to try sometime. One, begin a scholarship fund so that every one of your own children you send to college, you can create a scholarship for an at-risk youth. Get to know their families and learn from each other. Two, visit a worship service in which you will be a minority. Invite someone to a meal after the service. Three, confess something you have done wrong to someone you, you have wronged or offended and ask for forgiveness. Four, serve in a homeless shelter. For extra credit, go back to that shelter and eat or sleep there and allow yourself to be served. Five, go through a local thrift shop and drop dollar bills in the pockets of clothing in the store. Let us pray. Jesus, it is enough to tell others of your works of mercy, of your resurrection, of your imminent return. 
It is enough to praise you in the sanctuary, to kneel before you, to wait in silence for you. Lord, it is enough to be named as one of your children, to be bound in eternal love and freedom to give up our lives for you. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors.